Dumpty Dumpty Dum. Before? What is it? Well, the Miami tribe that lived in this area created little homes for them to live in. It's called a wigwam. Whoa, that's, that's so cool. Of this wigwam. And there's even an entrance and a fire pit. Whoa, that's so cool. Now let's take a look at some of the artifacts. Good idea. <laughs> Hello! This is the this is in bow and arrow. This is the bow and arrow that the Miami tribe would use to hunt animals. Cool! Hi! This is a spear. Because of its um because of over time it, it's only a spear head now because the wood would decay away. This is made of rock, wood, string, and feathers. Well the whole thing would be made of all of that, but the spearhead is made of rock. Its uses are um, hunting, war, and defense. And it's very useful because it can get your food for your family and defend your family. Hi, so this is a knife. I'm sure you've heard of a knife before. But when the Miamis built it, they weren't very rich. So instead of having like a steel blade that we usually do today, they had stone blades. And this one is fully intact, which is super rare because usually they would decay. So this must have been a relatively new one. And this is pottery. So um, the Miami people would have designs on them to make sure that people would know it was theirs. And it was this one was found near other pieces and that was brought here. So that must have meant it was either in maybe a pottery shop or they had more pottery than just this. This is a piece of beadwork. Beadwork was a very common art for the Miami tribe Indians. They used many beads and different threads for each one and they wove them into jewelry, clothing, and even moccasins and containers. This is a feather headband. The Miami tribe used deer skin to make them. They would only attach red feathers to the back of it, and they would sometimes have bead taking off. So, this is a miniature bow, or part of it at least. This is the arrowhead, and you can see it's dulled down because it's been in the ground for so long. And this is part of the bow and they would use this um i think it was used for a toy so that kids when they did have free time could play with some toys hello again oh god <laughs> this is a piece off a of moccasin the miami tribe would use moccasin as a shoe so they wouldn't step on snow and to keep their feet warmed. Hello, this is a bison skin. The Miami tribe used bison skin to keep themselves warm as a coat in the winter time. And I think that they used, that they had to use bison skin because it was very fluffy and kept them warm. Like if they used other kinds of skin, it wouldn't be as warm and it wouldn't be and it wouldn't keep them um, warm in the winter. So, hello again. This is called a camulet. And it was a ritualistic piece that um, was important to their culture because they used it to pray. And um, this one is fully intact. But as you can see, the colors have worn down over the years. So, hi everyone. In this may be a little surprising to you, which it shouldn't be, but the Miami Indians had medicine, and they had to carry the medicine in a medicine bag. As you can see, if if you can, uh, there is faint designs on this, 
and there's medicine in here. Luckily, surprisingly, they didn't like fall out and then decay away. The, the, um, some medicine was in glass bottles, which they had to trade for in order to get because I don't think they could get glass then. This the medication was made of herbs and other plants, and it could heal gun wounds and arrows wounds. This is Indian corn. Corn was one of the main harvested crops that the um, Native Americans harvested. It usually comes in different colors as this one, as you can see. And to preserve their corn over the years, they would boil it until it was very dry and hard, and they would preserve them. As you can see, this corn is well preserved because um, it's still pretty full. This is a cooking pot handle. The reason that the rest of the cooking pot is not here is because most of it already decayed away. As you can see, it's black, but back then it used to be gray because the because the cooking pots were usually made out of clay near the fire pit. And I think that it was made out of clay because that is what they could find and also they could carve it while they could also carve it while that it was still like that and then heat it up in the fire. Wow, this is really cool. This is a hammerhead. The reason that it is great is because it, it they made it out of rock. They carved it with other they carved it with other rocks and made it into a hammer shape. No relation to the hammerhead shark. Also, I think the reason that they carved it with another rock is because I think that that's all they had also. Hello. This this is a bucket that the Miami tribe would use. The woman would get water from the nearby lakes and rivers. This is an axe head. Like the spear, it is decayed away. And that is why there is no um, uh, handle on it. But if they use another material, it might have st still been there. It is made of um, rock and uh, it could be made of metal. They could get metal or trade for it. And um, it was made of very strong material, so it wouldn't break as fast as maybe sticks, just normal sticks. So they would use a big, thick piece of bark. Finally, this is the head of a tomahawk. The reason that you can't see the bottom of it is because it probably wore away because tomahawk, the bottoms of it, were made from wood. But this is a metal blade. Um, the Miami tribe got the metal from the Europeans when they came over to America. It is very sharp and dangerous, and it has many uses. You don't just use it for a weapon. You can also use it for chopping, cutting, and other everyday needs. Like the axe. So, we hope you enjoyed our looking at a wigwam. With archaeologists. Bye! Yeah, boy, yo!